whether in books, movies, or TV shows, we all can come to recognize some cliché stock characters. These are certain character patterns or formulas for creating character types that have become recognizable and familiar because they've been used so many times in different storytelling mediums. Often they are used so much that now they come across as a bit cliché or even caricature-ish. As a developmental book editor, I very frequently will work with authors on their character development to ensure that their characters are coming across as realistic, authentic, and that their objectives, motivations, and desires are resonating with the reader. You want to ensure that your characters are multidimensional so that their character arc is engaging the reader as they move through the narrative and experience the events of the story. So today I want to talk about five of the most common cliché stock character types that I come across in novel manuscripts especially, and talk about how you can make these types of characters more intriguing and unique if you have any that fall into these categories in your own book. Note that I am not saying that you need to avoid these stock character types entirely. In fact, you may already have one or several of them in your current draft, and that is totally fine. It's all about recognizing these stock character types and then ensuring that you are doing everything you can as the author to make that character unique and authentic to your own story. If you are currently working on a novel and you haven't already, I recommend subscribing to my channel. Every week, I either post a video with writing tips like this one geared toward helping you strengthen your manuscript and your storytelling, or I talk about the publishing industry because my background is in the traditional publishing world. And I'd love to have you around for all of my latest videos. I also have a freebie in the description below for all of my YouTube viewers. It is my free story self-assessment designed to help you identify the strengths and weaknesses in your current work in progress and identify what you potentially need to revise to take it to the next level. That is also going to sign you up for my newsletter where I have exclusive tips and insights that are not available on my channel. So now let's dive into the first cliche stock character, which is what I'm calling the damaged one. This is a character, typically the protagonist or a main character, who has some kind of trauma in their past that they are now grappling with in the present narrative. They have experienced something very terrible, whether the reader is made aware of that terrible event from the beginning or not, and it is affecting their current situation and their headspace. In many cases, it is potentially even overwhelming them, and it might be the main thing that the character is dwelling on. Oftentimes, this ends up being a female character, and it can even in some cases be a damsel in distress type character. But it does not necessarily have to be a woman. Now, giving a character a traumatic or problematic backstory is absolutely not a problem, and in fact, many characters in many well-known and best-selling books do have this type of struggle in their background. The key is that you want to ensure that that trauma is justified and that it is coming through authentically in the narrative. It should be reflected in the way that the character thinks and acts and even potentially speaks in the story so that it really feels believable and like a part of their character. Sometimes authors, in an attempt to give their character more layers or more backstory, they slap on this kind of traumatic event from the past and kind of stop there and say, see, I gave my character depth because look at this traumatic incident that happened. But you really have to see this element of their backstory all the way through the story and illustrate how it impacts the character's worldview and their desires and their objectives. Otherwise, the character's trauma is probably not going to feel authentic and they're going to fall into this superficial trope. So the way that you ensure that this character is coming across well in your story is to make sure that you have developed a transformative arc for that character. How do the events of the novel change them for better or for worse? They don't necessarily have to overcome or fully resolve their trauma from the past, but we should see them undergo some kind of development and some kind of reckoning regarding that past. Ultimately, you don't want this character to feel static and stuck in this space where their trauma and the problems of their past are really overwhelming them. The reader's going to crave a dynamic character whose backstory absolutely informs them and reflects who they are today, but isn't necessarily the 
only identifiable part of their persona. The next cliche stock character is what I'm calling the perfect savior. This character often comes in tandem with the damaged one that I just described, and they save them from the character's trauma in some way, kind of like a knight in shining armor. This character is often a male character, especially if you have a damaged character who is a damsel in distress, but it really doesn't have to be. For instance, you could have a character that falls into the damaged cliche who is a veteran struggling with PTSD. And then in that case, the perfect savior might be a female love interest that enters their life. The issue with the perfect savior is that they can come across as unbelievable and inauthentic because they are just too perfect. They're always doing the right thing, they're so benevolent and nice, and they seem to have no flaws. They really swoop in and save the day and seemingly can do no wrong. So how do you ensure that this savior type character feels authentic and is more interesting? Make sure that you give them their own personal objectives and that those come through to the reader. What do they want at the end of the day? Surely not the only thing this character wants is to heal the damaged character. They need to have their own personal drives and desires as well. Let them be a little bit selfish even. In that vein, try to illuminate even some of the darker sides of this character. What mistakes have they made? What regrets do they have? Do they have any unflattering qualities even? Typically, no character should be all good or all evil because people aren't that way. So your character shouldn't be either. Their flaws are at the end of the day actually going to make them feel more human and make your reader connect with them even more. The next cliche stock character is the wayward hero. This is a main character who is a lost soul. Perhaps they are at a juncture in their life where they have lost direction and really have no sense of what the future holds or what they should do or where they should go next. They're ultimately just lacking personal drive and lacking direction. The issue with the wayward hero is that it can be difficult to invest emotionally in this character's journey because their objectives are nebulous and difficult to pinpoint. In fact, they might even not know what they want. As a result, we may not have a good sense of where the plot is heading, which makes it difficult to get the reader invested in the story. So my tip for making the wayward hero more effective is to give them some source of motivation that propels them forward, even in a small way. Even if their overarching goals and objectives remain unclear and they aren't quite sure where their journey is going to take them, have them take some kind of small step. For instance, if you have a wayward character who just lost their job, for instance, and they don't really know what job they're going to hold next, you could have that event of them losing their job propel them to move to a new city. That is going to give us some kind of plot event to look forward to, and we'll be intrigued to see what happens when they do take that step of moving to the new city. Also, as the plot develops, make sure you are revisiting the character's objectives, desires, and motivations, and showing the reader how they are transforming as they are experiencing these new events. Are they starting to find a sense of purpose? Are they starting to be able to articulate their overarching goals and desires? That's going to help us connect with what they want to achieve and invest in seeing if they do actually achieve their goals. The next cliche stock character is what I'm calling the domineering figure. This is a figure whose purpose in the narrative is to wholly lord over another character's decisions. This could be a parental figure like an overbearing mother, or it could be a spouse who is a controlling husband or something like that. The issue with the domineering figure is when they start to overtake the plot and the reader can become frustrated if they have so much influence over the main character's decisions and actions. They also tend to be quite one-sided and overwhelmingly negative and are typically presented with very little backstory or redeeming qualities. That all feeds into them feeling more like a superficial cliche than a layered and complex character. How to make sure that the domineering figure works well in your story is to flesh them out and make them more multidimensional. Perhaps they can be domineering sometimes, but then other times they can actually be quite genuine and reasonable. Also try to explore why they feel compelled to have so much control over this other character. Where does that desire come from 
and why deep down are they lashing out in this way? I also recommend experimenting with trying to show scenes where you reverse some of the power dynamics between the domineering figure and the character they are domineering over. If the other character starts to gain ground, how does that impact the domineering figure? How do they respond? How do they feel? That's going to unlock other layers to the character and make them feel more multidimensional. The last cliche stock character that I wanna go over is the epic villain. Think of the epic villain like a comic book or a superhero villain. They have a singular, very broad, and wholly evil goal, like to take over the whole world. In a novel, the epic villain could take the form of a political figure or a serial killer, for instance. They have a very lofty and delusional goal and they have complete tunnel vision and are only focused on it, no matter the costs. The issue with the epic villain is similar to the other stock characters characters in that they can start to feel one dimensional, especially if we don't understand what ultimately is their underlying drive and motivation that is laddering up to this desire to achieve this lofty goal. So the key to making them effective in your story is to help the reader understand what deep down they are actually seeking to accomplish with this lofty goal. On a basic human level, what are they seeking more of? Is it attention? Is it affection? Or is it even validation? Another consideration with the epic villain is to actually make their objective a bit more specific and defined rather than something so broad like taking over the whole world. Perhaps they just wanna take over a specific city, for instance, because they are harboring some sort of resentment for those specific residents. Often the more specific you are, the more the reader's actually going to be able to connect with that character's drives. I hope this helped you think about how to craft more dynamic, interesting and engaging characters that come across authentic to the reader. Let me know in the comments if you recognize any of these character types in your story. I promise it's not a bad thing. In fact, I'm sure you can find these across so many novels and other storytelling formats. If you're interested in more tips on character development, check out my video on writing authentic characters. I go through some top mistakes I see in character writing and as always, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It helps me grow this amazing community. And don't forget that free story self-assessment waiting for you in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and happy writing.